Pressure measurements are commonly used in everyday life. The two most common uh, tools are barometers and manometers, and they are direct applications of the hydrostatic principles we have seen earlier. Barometers measure the atmospheric pressure. You may have one in your house to get a prediction of the weather outside. Low pressure is commonly associated with clouds and precipitations, while high pressure indicates clear skies. Barometers can also be found in aeronautical field in form of altimeters. We have learned that if the pressure is known, we can connect it to the current altitude. Altimeters are also used by skydivers to know what their altitude is and how far from the ground they are. Liquid barometers can measure the atmospheric pressure based on the height of a liquid column. A tube with a closed end is filled with liquid and then turned upside down with the open end immersed in a reservoir filled with the same liquid. The liquid in the column will first move and then stop at an equilibrium point where the fluid weight counterbalances the atmospheric pressure at the reservoir. Hence, the atmospheric pressure can be calculated as the density of the liquid times the gravity acceleration and the height of the liquid column. Normally, liquid denser than water, like liquid mercury, are used in barometers. This is because to display the atmospheric pressure using water, we will need a 10 meter long tube. Let's now analyze the manometer. This measurement tool is used to determine a differential pressure or in a simple words, the pressure between two locations. Manometers have numerous applications, like estimate the blood pressure in medical field, or we can see them applied to measure pressure and flow rates in pipes and HVAC systems. Manometers can be also used to analyze the aerodynamics of a body. The performance of the wing of an aircraft can be analyzed using a test model in a wind tunnel, estimating the pressure distribution over a section of the wing. We can place different pressure pores along the profile and connect them to a manometer bank, where we have a set of different manometer tubes that will show us what is the pressure distribution along the profile. The most common manometer is the so-called U-tube manometer, due to its peculiar shape. The pressure measurement is based on the height difference of the liquid in the two vertical tubes of the manometer. Assuming that the liquid is much denser than the gas on top of it, we can neglect the hydrostatic contribute of the gas and consider only the liquid. The difference in the liquid height between the two tubes multiplied by the density of the liquid and the gravity acceleration give us the pressure difference between the two measure locations. There are multiple ways to improve the sensitivity of a manometer. One approach is to use an inclined manometer. In this configuration, the fluid covers a longer distance along the tube for the same vertical height change, allowing smaller variation of pressure to be visualized. Another approach is to simply change the density of the fluid, recalling that the pressure variation between two locations is proportional to the liquid density, the gravitational acceleration and the fluid height difference. We can change the fluid density to have a better resolution of small pressure variations. For the same pressure variation, a denser fluid will have a smaller height change 
then a less dense fluid. 